So friends, inventory broadly can be divided into three types. The first one is finished goods. Second one is work in progress. The third one is raw materials, then spare, you know, spares or loose tools, etc. Consumables, etc. We'll talk about each of these categories. Let's first talk about this inventory of finished goods. Friends, in our earlier discussion, I was telling you that say there is a company which is which has purchased steel pipes. Now, somebody who buys steel pipes, say they have not yet sold those pipes. Those three pipes which are still remaining. We have not sold those pipes. The pipes which are not yet sold, but we want to just sell them. That's all. All we want to do is we want to sell them. We are holding on to these assets today in order to sell them. So, such items which we wish to sell them in that as is condition, we call them as finished goods. So, they are inventory of finished goods. That is definitely a part of our inventories. Now, come to the second category. Say we are not a trader merely, we have a steel factory. In a steel factory, from say uh, iron ore and all those steel coils, you will have to now start making the steel pipes. And now it is not yet in the form of steel pipe, it is under processing. It is under processing. So maybe it will take three more days for the pipe to be made. It is still in the processing. It is not at the raw material stage. It is not at the finished product stage. So it is somewhere in between. So such categories are called as work in progress. So this is in progress. In progress for what? This is in the process of becoming a finished good. This is in the process of becoming a finished good. Work in progress. Is it valuable or is it waste? We would have spent money. Today, maybe it is not in a form in which you ideally want it to be. You ideally want it to be in the form of a steel pipe. It is not it in the form of a steel pipe. But maybe all these 10 steps are needed for steel pipe to be made. We are in the sixth step. So that is also important. That is also valuable because unless these steps are all the steps are made, we will not get that finished product. So this is also a part of our inventory. We call it inventory of work in progress. Then come to the third one. Friends, raw material, maybe something like iron ore or maybe you purchased steel coil or maybe uh, it's not something which directly goes into the finished product. But for you to make the processing or for you to do the production, you need to heat it up and for heating it up, say you need coal and you purchased coal. In case of steel coil or say iron ore, maybe that will directly form part of finished product. So you can literally say, huh, this component also will go into finished product. But when you talk about something like coal, coal may not directly sit in the finished product, but you have to probably burn the coal, heat the entire you know, kind of boiler or whatever is the processing facility and then maybe you will get that finished product. So this coal which is used as a consumable in the production process, if you still have some material relating to coal left out, that also will be called as inventory. Of course, inventory of consumables. So there might be some grease oils or there might be things like coal or some loose tools all these things will be called as inventory. Inventories are assets held for sale in the ordinary course of business, basically like finished goods, held in the process of production for such sale, something like work in progress, or in the form of materials or supplies to be consumed in the production process or in the rendering of services. We spoke about assets held in the ordinary course of business, held for sale in the ordinary course of business. When I say that assets are held for sale in the ordinary course of business, if the company sells those steel pipes, the company will record that sale under sales, right? Into the P&L account, it will be written, the sale portion will come into the P&L account. If instead of selling pipes, the company sells a car, will the sale value of car come into P&L account? Don't say no. Don't also say yes immediately. It depends on what business the company normally does. So you should ask the question, hey, what is your business? The company says, steel pipes trading is our business. All right. Then why did you sell a car? And if we already bought a car in the past, we don't need it when we are selling it. Okay. Now this sale of car 
cannot be called as an ordinary activity and car you cannot say acha car is not yet sold it is pending selling so car is inventory no you can't say that why selling car for a steel pipes trader is not in the ordinary course of business on the other hand imagine say there is some concord motors or some other car manufacturing or some other car dealer uh, company this car dealer has an inventory of cars so when that person says i bought 100 cars you will not assume that this person bought 100 cars for own utilization or for uh, his or her own consumption but what do you assume this person bought those cars for selling because that person is a car dealer so for a car dealer the stock of cars will form part of inventory and when car is sold that person will record that sale as a part of pnl account in the pnl account in sales the sale of car will come if the stock what you have is something which is sold in the ordinary course of business then you can say that this particular item will be shown as inventory of finished goods let us take another example say there is a company which makes soaps for that company say oil is one of the ingredients which goes into manufacturing of soaps and the company purchased some 10 uh, boxes of oil those boxes of oil got used and those empty boxes are still there in the factory all right those oil that oil got used and only empty boxes of those oil are still in the factory each box say can be sold at 100 rupees and those boxes are still in the factory they can be sold my question is can we treat that as inventory can we treat those empty boxes as inventory because the point where i am coming from is ha huh, these are expected to generate economic benefits in the future so i want to treat them as inventory that's where i am coming from so these are expected to generate economic benefit in the future how when you sell these boxes you will get money so can we say that these empty boxes are inventory counting standards is no don't call them as inventory because if you ask this company hey is selling those boxes your business no selling those boxes is not our business making soaps and selling soaps is our business but it just so happened that to make soap we require oil and to buy oil we bought them in boxes and those empty boxes are saleable that's all so maybe you will show them as an asset and you will say ha huh, amount is receivable from these but directly you will not say these are a part of my inventory you cannot really call them as a part of your inventory because selling those boxes is not in the ordinary course of business let's look at another example the company purchased land what is the general entry say 1 crore is the amount that company paid to bank all right to bank 1 crore which account will you debit Sir, sir, what is this question? Obviously, fixed asset account debited to cash or bank one crore. That's the entry, friends. This is the entry which strikes probably ninety-nine percent of the students. But listen carefully to this. Just because I say land is purchased, you should not automatically conclude that it is a fixed asset. That land, the moment I say it's purchased, you should ask the question: What is the business and why did you buy this? Two things: What is the business and why did you buy this? say if i say that hey we are a construction company we bought land so that we can do construction on that then is this land something like a raw material or not correct or not so for a construction business you are going to use this land construct and then sell the uh, project so for a construction company this seems like inventory but if it is not a construction company it is a company say into uh, some factory it has a cement factory and this company purchased land now why did you purchase land the company said we purchased land so that tomorrow we can set up cement factory in that or we can extend our cement factory acha you want to use this for your business you want to use this asset in your business and get benefited from that right acha so then it should form part of fixed asset now on the other hand if the company says we had some surplus money we are not into construction business or any real estate business where land can be our current asset land cannot be our inventory we don't even want to use this land for our business so we don't even want it as our fixed asset then why did you make investment into land ha ah, investment only 
So you invest, I invested into the land because we had some extra money and that seemed like a good opportunity. We invested into land. That in such cases, that land should be shown as an investment, not as an inventory, not as a fixed asset. It should be shown as an investment. So friends, ask this question. What is the business and what is the purpose for which this asset was purchased? So when you ask these right questions, then you can classify as to whether it should form part of inventory or fixed assets or investment.